Hey, this is Dr. Ken Berry, family physician with over 20 years of clinical experience and author of Lies My Doctor Told Me. For the next few minutes, I want to discuss leg cramps, seven causes and seven cures. Millions of people suffer from leg cramps. Some people have them just very rarely. Some people have them almost every day. Uh, you can help yourself and your friends and your family by watching this video and also by sharing this video on your social media. So many people think that leg cramps are just part of life for them, and it doesn't have to be that way because you can share this information and help them out. Now, let's jump into the seven causes of leg cramps and then we'll I'm going to actually at the end of each cause I'm going to go ahead and talk about the cure right there on the spot so that you can figure this out for yourself. I've ranked these causes from the most common to the least common. Now the most common is not really that dangerous. The least common causes can be very, very dangerous. So you probably want to watch the last one just to make sure you know the most serious, dangerous causes of leg cramps so you can get that checked out if you need to. Okay, let's jump into this. Now, number one is, is by far the most common cause of leg cramps, and that is not getting enough salt in your diet. We were, we were taught starting about 50 or 60 years ago that salt is bad for us, that we shouldn't eat salt, we should limit salt, we should cut back on salt. Uh, there's no research to support that. There's a great book that I'm going to put a link to down in the, in the show notes you can check out where you can actually look at the meaningful research behind salt. Human beings are mammals. All mammals love and need salt on a daily basis. So stop being afraid of salt and eat salt to taste. I have a favorite salt that I'll put down in the show notes down below. But in your process of eating more salt, I want you to focus on eating real salt. Uh, so much salt that comes in the, you know, from the superstores has dextrose, which is sugar, has maltodextrin, has aluminum to keep the salt from clumping. It's natural for salt to clump. Real salt will clump, and that's okay. That's one of the ways you know that it's actually real salt. Also, salt that comes from the modern oceans can be full of microplastics and nanoplastics, neither of which you need. So make sure you're eating a real salt that is from an ancient ocean, not from the modern ocean. Number two, electrolytes. And, and under electrolytes here, I'm going to include magnesium, potassium, and calcium. And I'm going to talk about arachidonic acid because it kind of helps your muscle cells use the electrolytes. So it's it, almost everybody in modern society is depleted in magnesium and in potassium and many people calcium. This doesn't mean you need to take a calcium supplement. It just means you need to eat more calcium rich foods. Uh, any fish that contains the bones that you eat the bones like sardines, anchovies, these are great sources of calcium. You can get some calcium from dark leafy green vegetables and some other sources. I, I actually have a video on this channel about uh, good calcium sources in your food. Magnesium and potassium you can also get from your food. But keep in mind, regardless of your diet, whether you're eating the, the standard American diet or you're eating a low-carb keto carnivore diet, we're all, almost all of us in modern society are deplete in magnesium and in potassium, and you got to go out of your way to get these extra things. Now, I try to eat lots of foods rich in magnesium and potassium, but I also use an electrolyte drop that I put in my coffee and my other liquids that really helps me stay on top of my magnesium and my potassium. I eat lots of bony little fish that I eat their bones that gives me lots of calcium. And now arachidonic acid. This is something that your body makes, but also you can get it in your diet from eating lots of fatty meat, both red meat, white meat, and seafood. Arachidonic acid helps calcium go into your muscle cells, and your muscle cells can neither contract nor relax properly if you're not getting enough calcium inside the cell and arachidonic acid helps that. So make sure you're eating lots of fatty meat and seafood. That's going to help you have plenty of arachidonic acid to help the calcium do the job in the muscle that it's supposed to do. Number three, the third most common cause is, is temporary overexertion. Let's say you're living just a sedentary life and your friend comes to visit and said, hey, let's go for a hike. And you're like, well, I used to like hiking. Okay. 
So if you, you go for a hike and it's eight miles all uphill, and so that night or the next night, since you've overexerted your leg muscles, you may very well have some leg cramps. These leg cramps, that's normal. That's very common. It's not a sign of anything medically wrong with you. It's not even necessarily a sign that you have an electrolyte or a salt deficiency. It just means you overexerted those muscles. In a few days, those cramps will go away. And what that means is not that you should never go hiking with your friend again. It means that you should be more active more often. Because the more you use your muscles and the more you stretch them and the more you uh, strengthen them, the less likely you are to have leg cramps, muscle cramps in your legs. So don't worry about that overexertion. Uh, number four is medications. Now, a lot of people aren't even aware that medications can really increase your risk of having leg cramps. By far, the most common medications for this are the statin drugs, which lower your total cholesterol and your LDL cholesterol. People People take these drugs thinking that they lower their risk of heart attack and stroke. The research on this is equivocal at best and ridiculous at worst. I've got other videos on this channel about should you should you not take a statin to lower your total cholesterol. But one of the most common side effects of the statin drugs, which include Zocor, Lipitor, Crestor, Livalo, all these things will cause you to have muscle aches, joint aches, and muscle cramps in your legs. The next most common that I hear in clinical practice is Forteo or Avista. These are both medications to try and improve your bone density if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis. Uh, if you'd like to get off that kind of medication, if you're having leg cramps from it, then talk to your doctor, but also watch my video on this channel about osteoporosis. You can actually strengthen your bones naturally without taking a lot of prescription medications. Uh, any of the fake estrogens like estradiol, Estra test, uh, Primarin, Primpro, any estrogen you take in the form of a pill is a fake estrogen and they can increase not only your risk of just leg cramps, but also of blood clots in your legs, which is another cause of leg cramps I'm about to talk about down below. But if you're going to optimize your hormones, please use a bioidentical real hormone. Don't use the fake estrogen pills. Another medication that will increase your risk of leg cramps is naproxen, uh, Celebrex, any of the anti-inflammatories that are non-steroidal in nature ibuprofen, all these guys can increase your risk of leg cramps. Calcium channel blockers like Procardia and Norvasc fiddle with the calcium channel. And they fiddle with all the calcium channels, not just the ones in your heart and in your arterial tree, but also the ones in your striated or skeletal muscle as well. And so if you're taking a calcium channel blocker and you've already taken care of these other most common causes of leg cramps, you might talk to your doctor about another medication choice. Uh, Zyrtec. I hear patients talking about leg cramps if they take Zyrtec too often. It's fine to take occasionally, but don't take it every day for years and years. Cipro, which is an antibiotic, ciprofloxacin, uh, can cause problems with muscles and tendons and muscle cramps. Leg cramps are a symptom that I often hear. Celexa, which is a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, can tend to increase your risk of leg cramps. So if you're on Celexa or any of the SSRIs, you might talk to your doctor about decreasing the dose or changing to something else or just weaning down and stopping if you're having leg cramps. Now, uh, number, it, it, well, let me ask you this. If you've ever been on a medication that you think caused leg cramps, put in the comments down below what the name of that medicine was and if the leg cramps stopped after you stop taking the medication. Because a lot of people taking these medicines think they're completely harmless. And if they're taking an antibiotic, that just works on the bacteria. It doesn't have any other effect in the body. If you're taking a calcium channel blocker, that just lowers your blood pressure. That doesn't do anything else to you. And so seeing your comment may help somebody else understand, hey, these things have multiple potential effects and side effects. Maybe I should think about not taking that every single day of my life. Number five, is a blood clot in your leg called a DVT. Now, this would present usually as 
a cramp that kind of comes on in one leg, not both legs, but in one leg that the more you walk, the more the muscle seems to cramp. And then you won't have it. And then all of a sudden you'll have this and it, and it might stay the same or it might get worse. If you have a cramp in just one leg while you're walking, then you need to go see your doctor and get a venous Doppler done, which is an ultrasound that looks not at the surface veins on your leg, but at the deep veins that you can't see. But the ultra can't, uh, ultrasound can see these veins. And if there's a clot in one of these deep veins, then that needs to be medically addressed because it can increase your risk of a pulmonary embolism and all of the potentially devastating effects that would go with that. So if you have a cramp in one calf, or in one thigh and it just kind of started over the last few weeks and it's not getting better or it's getting worse, go see your doctor ASAP for that kind of cramp. Number six is a blockage in the artery in your legs. You can have this in one leg or in both legs. And this is going to be the more you walk, the more your leg muscles seem to cramp. You can also have leg cramps in the nighttime if you have blocked arteries that are supposed to be getting blood supply down to your muscles and your legs and your feet and your toes. This comes for, for people who have been diabetic for years or who have smoked or used any tobacco product for years and years, had high blood pressure for years. And so for this, if you suspect this, so basically if you've taken care of, of, of causes one, two, three, four, and you know you don't have five, then it could be peripheral artery disease, which can potentially cause you to wind up losing toes and feet and, and legs. So if you have this and you've taken care of the salt and the magnesium and, and, and you know you haven't overexerted, you need to go see your doctor and tell them you're, you're worried about the arteries in your legs. Your doctor will probably order a test called an ankle brachial index, an ABI, and that will show if the if the arterial circulation in your arms is about the same as in your legs, which it should be to a certain degree. If that's abnormal, you're probably going to wind up getting an ultrasound, a special kind of ultrasound of your leg arteries, and then you may even get angiography or a CTA to look at that even in more detail. Some people with lots of blockages down in the leg arteries have to have a stent or even a bypass, and it doesn't get better quickly unless you go see your doctor and get these tests ordered. Number seven, the final, which is by far the rarest cause of leg cramps, but in many cases is the most concerning, the most dangerous, and the, the biggest reason for you to go see your doctor if you're having leg cramps and you've taken care of steps one through five, one through six, and you know it's not that, then you need to go back to your doctor because number seven is some forms of cancer can cause you to have leg cramps because they can mess with your electrolytes. Even though you're getting enough electrolytes in your diet, they can mess with your electrolyte metabolism and lead to, to muscle cramps. Some of the autoimmune diseases can lead to muscle aches and muscle cramps down in the legs. Cirrhosis of the liver and other liver diseases can cause you to have muscle cramps in your legs. And on the initial lab work at your annual visit, there may be no indication that you have cirrhosis or liver disease. Your doctor is going to have to dig to the next level and look deeper to uncover this. Another very common cause of leg cramps is lumbar stenosis. Usually you're going to have lower back pain with this as well, but not always. And so go have a conversation with your doctor about could this be coming from my lumbar spine and I'm not having low back pain. Is that possible? And then you can have that conversation. Now, these are by far the most seven common causes of leg cramps and the seven cures, or at least the seven interventions that go along with them. I've got links to my favorite salt down below and the electrolyte drops that I use and the salt book that you probably need to read so you can tell your doctor to stop worrying about your salt intake. If you enjoyed this video where I take ancestral uh, the history of the human species and add it with some common sense and then look at the meaningful research behind it, then please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little link here or here you can click to subscribe and a little bell down there. If you click that, then you'll get a notification every time I have a bright idea. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.